Hello guys, um, so this lecture today I'll be talking about a really important topic is, which is going to be about the circle of Willis uh, and that too in 3D anatomy. So as you can see over here uh, on the screen, we have a 3D anatomy model of a skull uh, which has uh, the uh, circle of Willis inside it. So what I'm going to do is basically orient you the basic anatomy of the circle of villus, uh, exactly what arteries make up the circle of villus, uh, how many parts are there in the circle of villus, uh, exact orientation, the origin, and the various branches of the arteries you see in the circle of villus, and how the circle of villus originates and how it terminates in the brain. I'll be showing you that entire thing in brief anatomy, uh, in brief detail. Uh, using this tree anatomy model. So to start off with, this topic is really important for those who are neurosurgeons, especially for those who are doing their residency in neurosurgery, as well as for skull-based surgeons, uh, skull-based fellows. So because they really have to deal with the circle of villus, uh, circle of villus arteries uh, every time they operate in the area of the skull base and the brain. So, so as you can see over here, this is the superior view. So if I can zoom this out a bit for you guys, so you can see that this is the anterior facing of the skull. So for skull based surgeons, they will be operating the patient endonasally through endoscopic endonasal approach. Uh, for uh, the neurosurgeons, they may operate from any aspect, maybe be, be it from external approaches, maybe from superior lateral parietal approaches. So they may have a view like this somehow and skull-based surgeons will have a view like this somehow. So the skull-based surgeons and the neurosurgeons have different views of how uh, the circle of villus looks like intraoperatively. So basically, this is also really important for those who are in the MBBS, uh, the MBBS years, so because they may get a short note or a viva question for this as well. So let's start with the video. So the first things first, I'll talk you. Uh, I'll talk about the uh, origin of the circle of villus um, arteries. So basically, circle of villus is nothing but an anastomosis of the uh, various arteries in the uh, brain that supplies the brain. So majority of the blood supply of the brain is from the circle of villus. So circle of villus uh, is of two uh, has two parts. Okay, so it consists of two parts. What you can see over here. If I can zoom this, uh, so consider it as a lateral view. So its anterior part uh, it consists of the internal carotid artery. So the main artery or the main thing that supplies it anteriorly is the internal carotid artery, as you can see on the labeling over here, and the posterior circulation. So that's the anterior circulation by the ICA and its terminal branches. And the posterior circulation is going to be by the vertebrobasilar uh, arteries. As you can see, over here, the vertebral arteries then converging to form the basilar artery. So that's the posterior circulation. So these two are connected. So the uh, basilar artery eventually branches off into posterior cerebral artery. So these anterior circulation and the posterior circulation are connected by a uh, posterior communicating artery that communicates the posterior cerebral artery to the internal carotid artery. So I'll be talking about this in brief detail, so don't worry about it. I'll be talking about each and every artery so that at the end of this video, uh, if you watch this video, I hope that all your concepts about the circle of villus are really very clear. So. I'll also uh, post the link in the description panel below because I have done a video about the circular villus before as well. Uh, but that was the structural anatomy and its clinical significance. So where I have shown how easily you can uh, sketch a circular villus and remember the names for a really long term using a stickman art figure. So do uh, make sure that you check that out first if you want to. Uh, so. So we have this 3D anatomy model. So the first thing is the origin of the uh, internal carotid artery. That's the anterior circulation and the origin of the posterior circulation. That is the vertebral and the basilar artery. So if I zoom this out and show you the origin of the uh, ICA and the vertebral artery. So if I can show you in a separate 3D anatomy model over here, uh, as you can see over here, Wait a second. Yeah, as you can see over here, this is a 3D anatomy model. If I can just zoom this for you guys and rotate this, uh, what you can see over here, what you can see over here, that's the arch of aorta, right? That's the ascending and that's the descending aorta. That's the arch of aorta. So 
on the on the left side the common carotid artery as you can see over here directly ascends from the uh, arch of aorta but on the right side the common carotid artery as you can see over here that's the common carotid artery over here that directly ascends uh, from the arch of aorta but on the right side the common carotid artery as you can see on the labeling over here uh, arises from the uh, inanimate artery or as you can see the brachiocephalic trunk on the right side so on the left it directly arises from the arch of aorta as you can see over here that's the cca common carotid artery that directly originates from the arch of aorta but on the right side the uh, common carotid artery as you can see over here it arises from the brachiocephalic trunk on the right side so the brachiocephalic is also called as the inanimate artery sometimes so if i can show you if we further go keep on going above um, if i rotate this see that's the left side that's the right side so that is the origin of the um, so further at a particular point at a c3 c4 uh, level junction uh, this common carotid artery bifurcates into the external and the internal the internal being somewhat posterior medial to the external carotid artery so as you can see over here that's the internal carotid artery going up 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 and then at the end it enters into the uh, skull base through the entry point called as the carotid canal now i have also made a separate video about the skull base foraminas so you can go check it out so this is the entry point of the internal carotid artery that becomes the petrous part and eventually as if i can show you if i can remove the skull over here you can see this the same internal carotid artery comes over here and eventually terminates into the anterior cerebral artery and the middle cerebral artery so that's how the origin of the ica starts okay so if you talk about the origin of the vertebral artery and the uh, the basilar artery so as you can see over here if i can zoom this again for you guys so we could see that on the right on the on the right side uh, now vertebral artery is a branch of the subclavian artery okay so the subclavian artery on the right side again arises from the brachiocephalic trunk unlike on the left side the subclavian artery is a direct origin from the arch of aorta so on the right side that's the subclavian artery as you can see on the uh, labeling gives off a branch called as the vertebral artery as you can see over here that's the vertebral artery it gives off the vertebral artery the vertebral artery goes posteriorly and superiorly it keeps on ascending through the transverse foramina of the cervical vertebrae as you can see over here it keeps on ascending above above and eventually it enters up in the neck region and enters the skull base through the foramen magnum now remember that it enters through the foramen magnum as you can see over here that's the vertebral artery it takes a curvature it takes a huge curvature and it, as you can see over here it is entering the foramen magnum now that's the foramen magnum as you can see that's the vertebral artery that's the right vertebral artery similarly we can have the left vertebral artery over here and then they unite to form the basilar artery and eventually the basilar artery will end up or terminate in the posterior cerebral artery and this posterior cerebral artery as you can see over here that's the posterior cerebral artery with the help of the posterior communicating artery uh, joins up with the internal carotid artery to form the circle of villus so this was just the origin of how the circle of villus is formed okay so that was a basic anatomy of the origin of all these vessels that form the uh, circle of villus so if i go back to the original 3d model uh, of the anatomy showing the circle of villus so as you can see over here so that was the right uh, vertebral that's the left vertebral because we are seeing it from the uh, posterior aspect so that's the right and that's the left so that's how it forms the basilar artery so remember that the vertebral artery will always come from the foramen magnum and the internal carotid artery will always come from the carotid canal through that to the petrous part and then eventually it enters up into the skull base okay so this is the basic anatomy of the origin of the vessels now the second point will be the branches and the parts of the uh, circular villus now as you must have seen that 
wherever you want to learn about or read about the circular villus, we always Google it up. And what we end up with is this particular image online everywhere. So most of the newer surgeons, the skull-based surgeons and the students, the residents always end up studying this figure of the uh, circular villus. So I'm going to use the same figure to just make your understanding uh, more clear about this circular villus is that as you can see on the screen, uh, two vertebral arteries together unite and form the one basilar artery and eventually terminating into the posterior cerebral artery but on its course we can see uh, the vertebral arteries giving branch of the anterior spinal artery and also and the lateral aspect the vertebral artery on the lower region gives rise to the posterior inferior cerebellar artery right here um, if we go above the basilar artery now we can see two more branches okay so the lower one near the bifurcation or you can see the union um, is the anterior inferior cerebellar artery so we had the aica ica and we had the pica pica the anterior and the posterior inferior cerebellar artery as we keep on going above just before the bifurcation of the basilar into the PCA, uh, we've got the superior cerebellar artery, okay? And in between these two, that is the ICA and the uh, superior cerebellar artery, so we have these five branches on either side, that's the pontine branches uh, that supply the pons basically. So this is how the uh, anatomy of the basilar and the vertebral artery is. So eventually this is a posterior cerebral artery which is connected to the internal carotid artery with the help of the posterior communicating artery. So the posterior communicating artery, this may come as an MCQ is that the posterior communicating artery is a branch of the internal carotid artery. Remember that. So that we have the internal carotid artery over here and which bifurcates or terminates into the middle cerebral artery as you can see over here and the anterior cerebral artery as you can see over here so we have two more branches right here is the ophthalmic artery a direct branch of the internal carotid artery and the anterior choroidal artery as you can see over here a branch of the internal carotid artery or may sometimes arise from the middle cerebral artery so that's also a mcq question for your entrance exams if at all it comes so this is how the figure we commonly use. So in my previous video about the circular villus, I have made it very simple using this figure uh, by using a stickman art figure that how you can draw uh, the circular villus. So you can go and check it out. So if we go back to our 3D anatomy model, so normally what we get is the uh, that figure which we just saw. Uh, the figure which we just saw is the front facing figure okay so this will be the right side and this will be the left side this is the confusion which a lot of students make they think that this is the uh, left side and that's the right side no this is the right side and that's the left side because we are watching it from the anterior aspect so i'll make your doubts much more clear so as you can see this is the orbit okay that's the orbit so if i start removing all these bones over here so if i if i start removing all these bones right here so it's gonna make it more clearer for you so as you can see over here i've removed all the bones right now so what you can see over here is exactly the same figure which we saw on the uh, photograph as well so it was something like this okay so as you can see over here that's the vertebral artery the right side vertebral artery now this is front facing okay remember that this is right side vertebral artery if i rotate that you can see that's the internal carotid artery that's the vertebral artery and that's the basilar artery okay so this is how it works this is front facing always remember always remember the circle of villus will be drawn as a front facing circle of villus okay so always remember that so as you can see over here uh, if i bring back the same anatomy you can see that this is front facing so always remember if i remove this bone do not confuse the circular villus to be as from uh, back facing you cannot see it as back facing okay so it's always front facing so this should be right side and this should be left side so okay so the first thing in this 
anterior circulation is the internal carotid artery which we studied about the internal carotid artery as you can see over here directly terminates into uh, the ACA and the MCA so what you can see over here is the ACA and this is the MCA so uh, at the bifurcation point now the MCA supplies most of the uh, lateral surface of the brain uh, as you can see that it goes laterally but the uh, ACA as you can see over here the ACA is in the intercommissure fissure it supplies most of the medial part of the frontal lobe the intercommissure area and the superior medial part of the parietal lobe okay so that's the area of which the ACA supplies and the MCA supplies okay so further if you can see over here if I can just zoom this for you guys is uh, so that was the uh, internal carotid artery right here the terminating into the ACA here and the MCA over here so the ACA has got uh, five parts now I'm gonna make individual separate videos about each and every artery in the circular villus so for example i'll make a separate video on the anterior cerebral artery and its parts i'll make a separate video on the middle cerebral artery and its part its areas supplied and i'll make a separate video on the posterior cerebral artery as well so the first thing in the anterior cerebral artery is that it got four parts as you can see from the origin up to the anterior communicating artery you can see that's the a1 from the anterior communicating artery up to the bifurcation at the level of the uh, genu of the corpus callosum that's the a2 okay and uh, from the uh, anterior genu starts the a3 and the a4 and the a5 so i'll deal with that in much detail about it in the separate video on the anterior cerebral artery so this is how the uh, anterior cerebral artery is oriented so basically it is a midline structure so the anterior cerebral artery as you can see over here is a midline structure and supplies the intercommissure part of the frontal lobe as well as the superior medial parietal lobe okay so that's the anterior communicating artery that's the a1 that's the a2 and a3 a4 a5 accordingly okay so as you can see over here this is the area of the um, middle cerebral artery now if i can zoom out this uh, a bit so the middle cerebral artery has got four parts that is the m1 m2 m3 m4 which i'll be talking about in much detail in a separate video about the middle cerebral artery so just for your orientation guys as you can see over here if i give it a superior view it's going to be much clearer so that's the anterior aspect that's the posterior aspect so the middle cerebral artery as you can see over here is going superiorly and posteriorly so it's going superiorly and posteriorly above to supply most of the lateral aspects of the brain so uh, furthermore so that's the anterior circulation as you saw in the figure sometime back so that's the anterior circulation that's the ACA and that's the MCA so this is how they are literally oriented so if I go back to the posterior circulation we saw that the uh, right that's now this becomes the uh, this is the posterior aspect so this becomes the left vertebral artery that is the right vertebral artery which entered through the foramen magnum so they unite to form one basilar artery and this basilar artery uh, divides uh, eventually terminates into the posterior cerebral artery but on its way as you can see over here uh, that's the vertebral artery uh, this is the artery which you can see over here uh, after the union uh, the basilar artery at the lowermost region you can see that's the anterior inferior cerebellar artery on the vertebral artery you can see this is the uh, posterior inferior cerebellar artery and that becomes the uh, this becomes the anterior spinal artery and this becomes the posterior spinal artery right here so this is the anterior inferior cerebellar artery these small branches you can see over here these are the pontine branches which supply the pons and then at the uppermost region just before the bifurcation of the basilar into the uh, posterior cerebral you can see this is the area of the uh, superior cerebellar artery okay so this is how the termination and the branches of the posterior circulation occurs so as you can see further up ahead 
this posterior cerebellar artery goes posteriorly and supplies most of the occipital lobe and the inferior surface of the temporal lobe so they have to remember that really carefully so the posterior cerebral artery supplies the occipital lobe and the uh, inferior surface of the temporal lobe as it's a posterior circulation okay so we know what the anterior circulation that's the anterior cerebral artery supplies the middle cerebral artery supplies and now the posterior cerebral artery supplies so now as you can see over here the posterior cerebral artery is connected to the uh, internal carotid artery via a posterior communicating artery which is a, actually a branch of the internal carotid artery okay so as you can see it's in a 3d anatomy over here very clearly that it's directed anteriorly and a bit superior laterally that's the uh, posterior communicating artery so all these structures we can see always in a uh, in a MR, uh, MRI scan so very clearly also we can see these structures in a CT scan as well as CT angio so uh, radiology is really important for this aspect to study about the anatomy of the vasculature so this is how the connection of the circular villus happens and that's the 3D orientation of the uh, circular villus so as you can see over here that's the anterior choroidal artery as we saw some time back in the figure that's the anterior choroidal artery arising from the internal carotid artery and sometimes the middle cerebral artery okay so and as you can see over here uh, we all know that this is a superior orbital fissure between the lesser wing and the greater wing of sphenoid and that's the foramen rotundum for the v2 maxillary nerve so this is the optic canal so what you can see over here this is the optic canal and right at this region you can see that this is the internal carotid artery it's giving off a ophthalmic branch a small ophthalmic branch as you can see over here that's the ophthalmic branch which will enter into the optic canal along with the optic nerve so i have also made a video about the relationship between the optic nerve and the ophthalmic artery so you can go and check it out so that's the ophthalmic artery from the c7 branch of the internal carotid artery so the internal carotid artery has got uh, seven to eight parts so i have made a separate video about the entire course of the internal carotid artery you can go and check it out so the ophthalmic artery is a branch of the ophthalmic segment of the internal carotid artery so as you can see that's the ophthalmic artery okay so this is how the entire circle of villus is oriented in a 3d anatomy so uh, if i can add the basic structures of the brain and i can show you how they are actually related when the brain comes into action so if i can just add the brain for some time over here and this one as well if i can add the ventricles as well uh, if i can add the brain stem and if i can add the spinal cord you can have a very clear picture so if i can remove all these bones over here so you can see that various structures how the uh, circular villus is actually oriented okay so what you can see over here this is the anterior aspect and that's the posterior aspect if i can zoom this for you guys now i'm showing you the posterior aspect and now this is the anterior aspect that's the pituitary gland you can see over here so this becomes the right internal carotid that's the left internal carotid and as you can see that's the right vertebral that's the left vertebral and uh, the, un the right vertebral unites with the left vertebral to form the basilar artery you can actually see that the basilar artery is exactly behind the pituitary gland over here and just above the level of the gland and behind the pituitary stalk you can see the basilar artery terminating into the posterior cerebral artery okay so we can have the pons at this level and the midbrain or the, the medulla at this level so it's midbrain pons medulla the brain stem okay so as you can see over here this is the pons and that's the uh, medulla okay so at the junction of the pons and the medulla you can see the exact location of the anterior inferior cerebellar artery now this is one more uh, mcq for your entrance exams for students who are appearing for knee 
you can make sure that they can ask a question that which artery of circular villus is at the level of the uh, pons and the medullary junction. So your answer should be the anterior inferior cerebellar artery which is a branch of the basilar artery. And as you can see over here there are multiple pontine branches which supply the pons exactly right here. So this is how the 3D orientation of the circular villus is in relation to the pituitary gland. And as you can see over here, that's the temporal lobe. Uh, that's the temporal lobe. So if I can just show you the area of the ACA and the MCA. So if I can add the anterior cerebral artery and the middle cerebral artery. So I'll add the anterior first and then add the middle cerebral again. So as you can see, uh, this is the frontal lobe here and that's the parietal lobe here. So this becomes the interfrontal commissure. That's the interfrontal uh, commissure which you can see the anterior cerebral artery and its branches very clearly. So if I can zoom this you can see. Uh, you can actually see. So I have also made a video in the past uh, uh, talking about in detail about the uh, supraventricular approach to the uh, third ventricle so you can uh, you can you can go and check it out so that is like the uh, supracellar approach to third ventricle so how you can approach the third ventricle uh, above the uh, the the cellar so as you can see over here that's the uh, pituitary gland that's the pituitary stalk we're going to have the uh, that's the internal carotid artery that's the mca that's the middle cerebral artery and that's the anterior cerebral artery that's the anterior communicating artery so exactly here at this level will be the optic chiasm and above the optic chiasm you can always always see that there will be the anterior communicating artery lying in the plane of lamina terminalis so you have to widen up the lamina terminalis to access the anterior cerebral artery and the anterior communicating artery so exactly below that will be the optic chiasm and exactly behind the optic chiasm will be the third ventricular floor through which you can actually access the uh, third ventricle. The, the third ventricular floor is called as the tuber cinerium. So you can go and check that video of mine. I'll put the link in the description panel out there. So this is how the uh, arterial circulation of circular villus is related to the pituitary and the pituitary stalk along with the optic chiasm right here. So what you can see over here is the hypothalamus exactly behind. Um, so the circular villus, the mostly the anterior cerebral artery, the A1 and the ACOM actually supplies the hypothalamus through its perforating branches and its branches from A1 as well. So that is how the blood circulation of the circular villus also plays a role in this. So this is how the connection is. And if I can show you the uh, intercommissure fissure, uh, that's the branches of the uh, anterior communicating artery, the A1, and now that's the A2 above. So that's the A2 above. As you can see over here, that's the anterior cerebral artery and its branches from the A2 segment. It's gonna keep on going above, above, and in the next video, I'll be talking about in detail about show that you tune in for more. So this is how a rough anatomy of the circular phyllis is. So if I show you the lateral aspect of the uh, brain, whatever you can see over here, these are all the branches of the middle cerebral artery. And uh, if I go behind and if I can add the uh, posterior cerebral artery over here somewhere, wait a second it should be somewhere here okay so if i can add the posterior cerebral artery you can actually see that how the temporal lobe inferior surface and the occipital lobe is actually supplied by that posterior cerebral artery so here it is so So as you can see, I just added the uh, branches of the posterior cerebral artery. Now this branch, basically the parieto occipital branch of the posterior uh, cerebral artery. This is the parieto occipital branch, okay? So that actually communicates with the, uh, the anterior cerebral artery uh, to form a communication.
and this is the anterior aspect and that's the posterior aspect so this is how it supplies the occipital lobe uh, and the inferior uh, surface of the uh, temporal lobe and that's the temporal lobe as you can see over here and you can see there's the blood supply over here and that's the posterior temporal branches of the posterior cerebral artery right here as you can see that's the posterior cerebral artery and how it can give branches to the as you can see that's the pca and it's giving of branches to the inferior surface of the uh, temporal lobe and that's the branch uh, that's the uh, parieto occipital branch yet another branch of the uh, posterior cerebral artery which eventually connects to the anterior cerebral artery at the level of uh, a4 and a5 so this is how the 3d anatomy of the circle of villus actually looks like so Okay, so this is how the 3D anatomy is for you guys. So if you if you want to study the circle of villus on the radiology aspect, so if I can show you a radiology of a patient. So as you can see over here, this is the area of the uh, axial section of the MRI of a patient. This is a T2 section. As you can see, that's the uh, hyper intense signal in the uh, vitreous fluid. So that's the T2 and you can see the CSF as well. So if I can zoom this for you guys. Um, so this is the axial section. I'll start off with the posterior circulation first. Um, if you can if you can just pay attention on this aspect over here, that's the cerebellar hemispheres. Uh, that's the posterior aspect. And you can see there are two openings or you can see the two uh, black circular shadows over here. These are nothing but the, uh, if I can zoom this, these are the vertebral arteries. So this becomes the right vertebral and this becomes the left vertebral. So if I keep on going above, it's going to come towards each other. And just as I so do that, you can see a small branch over here. If I can just zoom this for you guys, you can see a small branch coming here at the level of the uh, vertebral arteries. That should be the branch of the posterior spinal artery. If, as if I, as I keep going above, you can see one more branching coming off over here. And as I keep on going above, you can see these two are uniting to form one common basilar artery. Okay. Now that the basilar artery has been formed, uh, now you can immediately see a branch coming off right here. So the immediate branch uh, which the basilar artery gives is the anterior inferior cerebellar artery, that's the ICA. So if you can see sometime back, we could see the vertebral artery giving off a branch, that's the posterior spinal artery, then the anterior spinal artery. And somehow, if it is very clear, you can actually see at somewhat this level of, I can see a faint shadow over here at this region. That could be the uh, posterior inferior cerebellar artery, a branch of the vertebral artery over here. So as I keep on going above, I can see the formation of the basilar artery and immediately I can see the branching over here. And that branching is nothing but the anterior inferior cerebellar artery, that's the IACA. So if I keep on going above, uh, I can see the bifurcation of the so as you can see over here, it is still one single opening over here. So that's going to be the basilar artery head. So the basilar artery terminates into the posterior cerebral artery. So you will start seeing two openings. That means it is now bifurcating into posterior cerebral artery. But just before that, what you're going to see is that you're going to see two branches. As you can see over here, there are these two branches. These are nothing but the uh, superior cerebellar artery. Okay. So that's the SCA, the superior cerebellar artery, this superior cerebellar artery. And then as we keep on going up, 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 eventually it's going to bifurcate. As you can see over here, it bifurcated very clearly. You can see this is the bifurcation of the basilar artery. And this is nothing but the posterior cerebellar artery and two openings above, which you can see is nothing but the posterior communicating artery so that's the posterior cerebral artery remember my wordings this is posterior cerebral artery and not cerebellar so that's the bifurcation you can see that's the initiation of the posterior cerebral artery and two openings above which you can see over here is the posterior 
communicating artery and what over here you can see is the internal carotid artery so that's the internal carotid artery that's the posterior communicating artery you can clearly see if i can zoom this for you guys you can clearly see that this posterior communicating artery is clearly coming off as a branch of the internal carotid artery right here and then it is going and touching the posterior cerebral artery right here so if i can show you in a very slow mo that was the bifurcation of the uh I was the, see this was the basilar artery right now it is bifurcating into posterior cerebral artery this is the posterior cerebral artery right here that's the posterior communicating artery which is in communication with the internal carotid artery and then it is going off and as you can see this is a clear cut picture of the posterior cerebral artery very clear you can see this is posterior cerebral artery going behind as i showed you on the 3d anatomy model it is going behind it is going behind if i keep on going behind behind you can start seeing that this is the internal carotid artery you can then above start seeing the optic nerve over here you can start seeing the optic chiasm over here and this is still the internal carotid artery over here now uh, as i told you that the optic chiasm uh, the anterior communicating artery that and the a1 segment will be always above or you can see the superior level to the optic chiasm so this is the axial section so the moment i'm going above i'm going superiorly okay so as you can see over here i could start seeing this is the internal carotid artery as i could start seeing the optic chiasm so as i'm going above i'm going superiorly so this is the optic chiasm now if i go above the optic chiasm now as you can see this is the optic chiasm now disappearing what i can see over here is the internal carotid artery now pay close attention to this structure over here which is the ica if i'm going above above reach the level of the optic chiasm now if i reach at a superior level of the optic chiasm you can start seeing that this internal carotid artery right here is bifurcating as you can see over here see see again one more time i can zoom this for you guys this is the optic chiasm almost ending if i'm going superiorly to it as you can see over here this internal carotid artery bifurcating into two structures this over here is the mca that's the middle cerebral artery and this over here is the anterior cerebral artery so i'll show you one more time this was the internal carotid artery a single lumen on both sides as i'm going above superiorly slowly slowly you can see that this same internal carotid artery bifurcated on the lateral aspect as mca on the medial aspect as the aca okay so if i keep on going superiorly above again this was the end of the optic chiasm right there right this was the end of optic chiasm the optic chiasm immediately above or you can say superior to the optic chiasm you will start seeing that is the a1 that is the a1 that's the right side a1 that's the left side a1 and what you can see over here is the anterior communicating artery and that what you can see here is the a2 so this becomes a1 this becomes a2 now the a2 will keep on going vertically straight up as i showed you on the 3d anatomy model so it will keep on going vertically straight up so if i keep on going superiorly as you can see over here now these two become as separate circular black holes because they are going to travel vertically upwards and not laterally so whatever you can see over here two black holes are nothing but the a2 segment of the anterior cerebral artery until it divides into a3 a4 and a5 at the level of the anterior genu of the corpus callosum that is it divides into pericallosal and callosal marginal branches of the a3 so as you can see over here i'm going up 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 and still it is at the same place vertically distinct from each other and eventually it disappears into the parenchyma of the brain okay so this is how the anterior cerebral artery looks like on the mri on the axial section and this is the intercommissure fissure you can see over here and that's the uh, bifurcation of the ica into a1 
and this here is the MCA. So it you can see actually you can see the course of the MCA as well over here. And the MCA travels in the sylvian fissure. Remember that the middle cerebral artery travels in the sylvian fissure. What you can see over here is the MCA clearly. Okay, that's the MCA. You can actually see the ACOM, the A2, A1, and the MCA. Uh, this is the sylvian fissure. And whatever multiple black holes you can see over here are nothing but the branches of the middle cerebral artery which i just showed you on the 3d anatomy which supplies the lateral surface of the brain so that is how the internal carotid artery and the vertebral artery basilar artery system the entire circle of willis you can study on the mri as well with clear picture and this is the mri uh, of the patient uh, and that is also a T2 image as you can see over here this is a T2 image not even T1 post contrast this is T2 image and this is how you can actually locate for the vessels so the vessels are going to be looking like a black void because of flow voids but if you go for a T1 post contrast and um, that too if you do not go for a superimposed ones you can actually see the contrast filling up in the MRI scans and if you go for the MRI venogram you will be able to see all the venous structures the venous sinuses will, which will be bright white on the MRI venogram but you won't be able to see the arteries, arteries on the MRI venogram so you got to study for the uh, superimposed scans of T, uh, T2 okay or you can you can go for T1 post contrast as well so this is how you can actually see a circle of willis in its complete structure uh, on MRI now remember that not all 100% human population is going to have complete circle of willis sometimes there are a lot of variations one side may be completely absent one side may be decent uh, one, they have a lot of chances of um, aneurysms ischemia stroke which i'll be talking about in detail about when i'll be talking about these individual uh, cerebral arteries in my next videos so this is how it looks on the radiology that's the mri scan and um, i already showed you how it looks like on the 3d anatomy model so these were the uh, branches of the mca which we were talking about a lot of black holes on the lateral aspect so this is how you can study about the uh, 3D anatomy of the circular villus. I hope after watching this video, each and every concept about yours uh, and the circular villus is really clear. Now, there's one more important thing. The last thing which you need to remember uh, for as a beginner or as a neurosurgeon or a skull based surgeon is that the relationships of the circle of villus arteries along with the cranial nerves so i'll be talking about for the next five minutes only about the relationship between the uh, arteries of circular villus and the cranial nerves so i'll show you some photographs over here so i'll show you this okay uh, if you can see over here now this is an image as you can see over here now this is a skull base that's the anterior facing skull base what you can see on the screen is the pons and below that what you can see is the medulla so that's midbrain pons and medulla and this is the uh, pontine medullary junction at the level of the anterior inferior cerebellar artery as i showed you sometime back so this is a cadaver image uh, 3d image as well as a cadaver image comparing the levels of the circular villus and the uh, neurovascular structures so as you can see over here the red circle area is zoomed out in this region so this is the basilar artery okay that's the basilar artery that's the multiple pontine branches the pons that's the pons basilar artery uh, this is the superior cerebellar artery and uh, yeah, as you can see over here that's the superior cerebellar artery and above that will be the posterior cerebral artery so at this level we are going to get the third cranial nerve that's the oculomotor nerve so always remember that at the uppermost level of the basilar artery where you can see the superior cerebral wait a second superior cerebellar yeah so superior cerebellar and the posterior cerebral artery that region you're going to see the oculomotor nerve and just lateral to it obliquely you're going to see the trochlear nerve and just below and lateral to that you're going to see the trigeminal nerve which is v 
So this is how the orientation of the branches of the circular villus and the uh, cranial nerves is. So this is the above, this is the uppermost section. So we have three sections. So this is the first section I'm going to show you. So the first section lies at the uppermost region of the basilar artery along with the uh, SCA, that's the superior cerebellar artery and the PCA, the posterior cerebral artery. So in between these two, you're going to see the oculomotor nerve, the trochlear nerve obliquely and the fifth trigeminal nerve, which is way too laterally. So if I show you the next image, uh, so this was the uh, second, this is the second quadrant. Now, as you can see here, this is the pons and that's the uh, medulla. So this was the uh, first and the uppermost segment where I showed you that the uppermost part of the basilar artery lies and that's the SCA and above is the PCA and where you can see the oculomotor nerve, the trochlear nerve and the fifth nerve. Now, the second region which is at the junction of the pons and the medulla, so that's called as the pontomedullary junction which covers up the second and the middle region. Now, whatever you, whatever you see in the green over here is the first and the uppermost part, the upper area of the basilar artery. Whatever area you see in the blue here is the middle part, which covers most of the basilar artery, the union of the vertebral arteries, the anterior inferior cerebellar artery, cerebellar artery and the pontomedullary junction as well. So you always have to remember whenever you talk about pontomedullary junction, you're going to talk about the anterior inferior cerebellar artery. Okay. And in this region, the most important nerve is running from lateral to medial aspect is the sixth cranial nerve, as you can see over here, directly lateral to the basilar artery. Uh, you can see this multiple pontine branches. I can see a torches, multiple pontine branches over which we are seeing the sixth cranial nerve, that's the abducens nerves. Also, we are going to encounter the facial nerve at this region as well. So the facial nerve is lying directly beneath the sixth cranial nerve and above the ica because uh, anterior inferior cerebellar artery is a demarcation point between the facial nerve which is lying above the ica and the uh, eighth, which is the vestibular cochlear nerve, which is lying below the IACA. Okay, so this is the IACA above which will you see the facial nerve and below which will you see the eighth cranial nerve. Okay, so moving forward in the next picture, you can see the lowermost region over here. As you can see over here, as I was saying some time back, this is the left vertebral, that's the right vertebral. Together they form the basilar artery. Now this very level at the pontomedullary junction is the IACA. And as I said some time back, this is a sixth nerve which you can see over here. And just above the level of the IACA, you can see the seventh cranial nerve. And just below that level, you're going to see the eighth cranial nerve right there. And the ninth and the tenth accordingly one below the other. So once the level of the pica reaches, that is the posterior inferior cerebellar artery, you will start seeing below that the 11th and the 12th cranial nerve lying like this. So if I give you a much clearer picture over here, this is the most inferior quadrant of the brainstem in relation to the circular villus. You can see that structure in yellow. We can see that this is the pica and below that we're going to see the 11th and the 12th cranial nerve. The 12th cranial nerve having two divisions and the 11th cranial nerve behind the 12th running obliquely. So the 12th is much more anterior and the 11th cranial nerve is posterior as you can see over here. So this is how the circle of villus is in relation to the, uh, the cranial nerves. Now if at all a patient is having a hemifacial spasm it means that the anterior inferior cerebellar artery is involved. As you can see over here, that's the seventh cranial nerve. The anterior inferior cerebellar artery is involved. If the patient is having a trigeminal neuralgia, it means that somewhat the artery around the fifth cranial nerve is affected. So as you can see over here, this is a fifth cranial nerve and immediately the superior cerebellar artery is in close relation to that. So the superior cerebellar artery should be taken into consideration for microvascular decompression in case of trigeminal neuralgias. Okay. Also, 
we have the ninth cranial nerve as you can see over here so both in case of ica and pica we can see the ninth cranial nerve that's the glossopharyngeal nerve neuralgia but most commonly the pica is actually really involved with the aneurysms or you can see the pica aneurysm may be involved with the uh, the ninth cranial nerve uh, problems that is the, that's the glossopharyngeal neuralgia so in microvascular decompression you should consider pica more often than the ica so this is how i would like to finish off the circle of villus in its complete anatomy from a to z so i think there is nothing extra beyond this for circle of villus uh, except for the life surgery i think i've covered almost all the points for the circle of villus so i hope you enjoyed this lecture and if you have any any doubt about this lecture or anything you feel i spoke wrong about the anatomy feel free to comment in the comment section below and whatever you want to learn next time or whatever doubts you have please share that with me so i can teach you guys it next time okay so i hope this lecture gave you a lot of knowledge and uh, please give me a feedback of any doubts or any clarity you require so till then thank you guys take care be safe out there